Good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Tesla. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the new wrap design. We got a lot more to do today. Uh, hopefully, we have time to do some, but I don't know. I might have soccer tonight. However, it is supposed to thunderstorm, so there's a good chance soccer gets canceled that I can do some more wrap. That's not a bad thing, not a good thing, but it is a thing. Oop. Almost forgot the coffee. All right, welcome back to the Tesla. Welcome back to another episode of Tesla Talk Tuesday. Today I'm going to be blabbering on about my Tesla specifically and basically the costs associated with buying and owning a Tesla, depreciation, all that good stuff because I'm, I'm kind of in the market, but not really. More to come. Let's get out of the garage. Actually, never mind. We got coffee in the car, and um, well, my car even launches hard enough to spill some coffee, so not quite. Maybe this afternoon. Ooh, we got a Bentley. I never understand it. Like those two lanes always get all backed up, and then this one's pretty much wide open. Traffic patterns really puzzle me. Anyways, uh, we got ourselves a Tesla, not a Bentley. Um, I do actually like my Tesla much better. The acceleration is much better. I don't have to pay for gas. Uh, fuel economy and Bentleys are pretty terrible. And um, well, this car is a fantastic car to drive around in. So very happy with my Tesla. All right, guys. So the biggest thing, as you all know, is I am coming up at the end of my warranty, 96,296 miles. That means we have roughly 3,704 miles left before warranty expires, or if I don't drive that many miles before February of 2021, that's also when my warranty would expire, either one of those. But the point is, the warranty period is coming to an end here soon, and the real question remains, do I keep the car, do I trade in the car, or do I just buy a second car? I know, it's, it's a lot of possibilities, they're good options to have, however, uh, the financial position that I'm in is not, not perfect for all of those scenarios, so I'm just trying to you know play it through my head, think about each one financially, what the repercussions may be, what the outcomes look like, you know, how much money am I gonna lose in each situation, uh, what kind of content I can create for you guys on the channel, all of that fun stuff. So it's, it's um, it's interesting. So let's just get to it. So if you watch my vlogs, or if you don't watch my vlogs, but have seen any titles for my vlogs, or if you haven't watched my vlogs and haven't seen any titles on my vlogs, you may or may not know that my car has been to the shop for numerous, numerous things to be replaced and or repaired. Now, I don't really see that as a bad thing because a lot of the things that were replaced or repaired were, uh, a, everything that was replaced, replaced or repaired was covered under warranty, so I didn't have to pay for it, which is fantastic, but obviously a lot of people are saying you've had all these problems with your car, why would you want to keep it out of warranty, it's terrible, but the point is most of the things that have been done to my car were known issues with earlier cars, so if you buy an earlier Model S, you obviously want the warranty because, well, there could potentially be a lot of these issues that I had. So. Uh, my center touchscreen was replaced, door handles were replaced, my drive unit went bad. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. There, there were some other smaller issues that I had. Like um, when I got the drive unit replaced, I took it back after that because there was some like clicking noises and things like that. But it was simply because they hadn't torqued down some of the nuts uh, enough. So that really wasn't a, a problem. It was just you know something that they took care of or they they didn't take care of fully when they switched it out but they took care of it obviously when i brought it back so it wasn't really an issue um so because of that it's almost like i have a brand new model s in a way i mean obviously parts get used they're getting older i have a hundred thousand miles on the car so basically i have yes a used model s from 2014 but but 
I have a lot of new components and parts on my car because of things that I've had replaced. Um, so because of that, it gives me less worry going forward because I know that I have all of those new parts on my car, which means that they shouldn't go bad because they replaced the old old parts that were known to go bad and well, they're the parts that are being used in current cars now. Um, so just based on that, you know, a lot of these parts I'm assuming were original parts, obviously, you know, you never want to make assumptions, but if they were original parts, that means they lasted close to 80,000, 90,000 miles, close to 100,000 miles. So I should be good for a while before anything starts going bad again. Now, the other thing is some of those parts I, I would probably attempt to change on my own. If a door handle went bad in the future, it's not super, super complicated, but um, you know, if I wasn't under warranty, I would probably attempt to do that work myself. It's not, not too crazy and it would make a great vlog. And well, I, I, I wouldn't be scared to, to try that. There's tons of videos, obviously Rich Rebuild did it. I don't know if he's the OG that did it, but uh, yeah. Point being, even out of warranty, I think I think that my car will hold up pretty well. Brand new touchscreen, don't have to worry about the leaking or bubbles in it because it's, well, pretty much brand new. Um, two of the door handles have been replaced. Driver's door handle, passenger door handle. I haven't done any of the rear ones, they just haven't gone bad. The rear drive unit was replaced. Now those were also known to fail in earlier cars. However, that is actually still under warranty for another three years, I think, and unlimited miles. So the drive unit and battery, I don't know if this is true on new Teslas now, but it was it was eight year unlimited mileage warranty. I believe it's still the case. So if you get a car, the drive unit and battery, um, they're good to go. And those are the biggest, most expensive, most crucial, critical, important parts of the car, I would say, because obviously that's how you drive the car. But those are still gonna be under full warranty. So if the drive unit goes bad again, I'm good. I don't have to pay 10 grand to get a use, to get a drive unit replaced on the car, anything like that. So um, based on all of those factors, it doesn't bother me too much to keep the car. Now, the negatives of keeping my car. I obviously don't have autopilot. So that's obviously a huge uh, downfall there. The other thing is I don't have the newest technology. So I can't get some of the cool updates that are coming out. I don't have sentry mode. Um, I don't have the cameras all around my car. So a lot of those things, if I want any of that, if I want to make content with any of that, I can't unless I get a second Tesla, like a Model 3 because they're cheaper, or trade mine in and get a new Model S potentially. Now, the thing's kind of prohibiting that cost. Um, if I get a Model 3, the only one I would want is the Model 3 Performance. And well, the Model 3 Performance is around 55000 now, trading in my car, I still owe some money on the loan. Um, not underwater though, I could sell the car for more than what I owe on the loan, so I'm good, I'm good on that, thank goodness. If I buy a new Model S, I would want the performance version of that too, which is $100,000. I, I don't know if I can swing that or not, or if it's worth it. And the biggest problem is depreciation on a brand new Model S. So, for example, my car. My car new in 2014 was like, probably close to $120,000. Um, you know, it was the fully specced out, top of the line performance model at the time. And um, unless there were P85 pluses, but I don't remember when they phased those out. Either way, P85 at the time, pretty much all the options. You got the rear facing child seats, you got the carbon fiber interior, you got the, uh, what's it called? Cold weather package. I, I, I don't know. I can't list everything, but it had pretty much all the options. So close to $120,000. I bought this car for $50,000, which means it already took over a 50% hit on depreciation just from, what was it? Uh, I guess it was four years at the time and 72,000 miles. Um, and then since I've had it, I might be able to get around 30,000 for this car. So I've already lost 20 grand on this car in a year and a half. And well, you can get P85s for the $30,000 range. Now what this means is, if I were to buy a new Model S for $100,000, my assumption is in about four years, that car would lose about 70% of its value, which means I would lose around $70,000. Granted, I would get to enjoy driving it, I would have all the cool new advanced features, I would have autopilot, very luxurious car, it's a fantastic car and I would enjoy driving it, but you know, if you're losing $70,000 on it, 
Yeah, it, that's also true of you know any other luxury car. You're buying a Mercedes, a BMW, you're gonna take a huge depreciation hit on those cars, um, and well, that's gonna be most cars in general. So that's usually why I shy away from buying new. You just lose so much of the value, and uh, well, I don't necessarily want to buy like a used Model S because they're still fairly expensive, and you're just not getting the full range that you could on a newer car. Plus, you'd have to figure out which year, you know, to buy because if you go too old, you're not going to get the newest hardware, which won't be able to support full self-driving, and well, that's obviously an issue. Now, another benefit to getting a Model S is that you get free unlimited supercharging if you buy a new one. So that's kind of the catch, but the free unlimited supercharging is nice. However, my understanding is that doesn't transfer to whoever you sell it to which means it doesn't help with the resale value. Now the benefit of the Model 3 is it's cheaper and I could potentially do more mods to it, like getting body kits, wide body kits, um, I don't really know what else, suspension I guess, I, I don't know. There's like, you know, there's some, there's some nice things I could do to it because it's obviously cheaper than a Model S and I would have some extra cash to do some cool things to it. Now the benefit of getting a second car and not getting rid of this car is comparison videos. Um, you can see one of the OG, well not OG OG Teslas, but more original Teslas, and uh, just the difference in technology between the two. I can also do uh, some comparisons on just general charge times, racing, all that good stuff, but um, the one thing is my car is rear wheel drive, and well that is fun for donuts, which I have done on a couple occasions, but not too often, some more content around that. And, um, uh, well, just turning off traction control because these cars break traction like that. Just the instant torque is so much fun on these and having rear wheel, rear wheel drive is a blast. However, a Model S over a Model 3, I, I just, I like the Model S better. That's, that's my hesitation of getting a Model 3, but a new Model S is just so expensive. I just don't know if I want to spend that kind of money to then lose, you know, 70% of it over the next three to four years because I'm definitely going to drive it all the time. Now there's another option which which is uh, another car. I've been looking at used Lamborghini Gallardos with a manual gearbox in like the $80,000-ish range. And the nice thing about that is I can put some miles on that thing every year and especially if I have two cars I'm going to be splitting mileage. So if I'm doing like five to 7,000 miles on each car, that's really not that bad. And the Gallardo really isn't going to lose value because those cars have already taken their 50 to 60 to 70 percent depreciation hit, depending on how they respect. They're around 200,000 new. If you can get them in the $80,000 range, you're saving a good chunk of money. And um, and well, if I got that car, I could keep my Tesla, make some new content with the Gallardo. I would have a gas car and an electric car. Talk about the differences between those. Um, show off the benefits of having a nice, fun, gated manual V10 that sounds amazing, screams, shifts through those gears with the gated gear. I mean, that, that car is going to be a blast. And um, well, I would get the best of both worlds. So it would be something a little bit different, switch it up on the channel, but I would still have the Tesla. And um, well, they would both be very, very fun cars. All right, well, we are obviously going into work. So give me like two seconds and then. Uh, more of me blapping on and or we'll just get to my wrap because that's really the most important thing right now we got to get that done it's taking forever yeah all right all right all right all right uh, off work headed home actually headed to my parents house so i apologize i'm um well, soccer's kind of that's on the way to i have soccer tonight potentially if it doesn't rain and um well i'm going to try to get more wrap done and a couple other things but anyways Tesla Talk Tuesday, guys. So, yes, I've been talking about my Tesla a lot, but let's actually cover a couple things that are interesting that are in the news because, well, I find them very fascinating. So uh, uh, let me just get out of the garage and then let's get right to it. Ah, the awkward part of the day when I have to open my door in order to get out of this gate up here. <laughs> All right, nice and easy, nice and easy. Whew. All right, so Tesla Talk Tuesday. All right, all right, all right, all right. So apparently, 
Wait a minute, let me just make sure there's no pedestrian. So, Jaguar is apparently offering $3,000 off an iPace if you purchase one, if you can prove that your household has a Tesla. So it's a special Tesla homeowner discount on an iPace because they can't sell the cars and they know that they're directly competing obviously with Tesla. But anybody who owns a Tesla, I don't think would ever even consider an iPace. You don't have the supercharging network, the cars are terrible, the range is less, the performance is worse, the cargo space is less. I, I mean, it just, it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense on any account really. And well, you don't get the awesome over the air software updates. You don't get the full self-driving stuff that the Tesla, well, at least I don't think you do, I don't know. But either way, I would never even consider an iPace especially not for only $3,000 off just because you have a Tesla in the household. I mean, to get me out of a Tesla and into a Jaguar I-Pace, you better be offering like a 50% discount because there's just, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it on, on any count, at least not to me. So I would, I would never do it. I think it's funny. Um, they first started introducing like 0% APR financing, um, but clearly they are not moving these cars. I think they've done like 1500 units uh, As of the end of July in North America, maybe which is like absolutely nothing especially compared to how many units the model 3 is moving um, But I mean the model S and X are still doing more units than, than the Jaguar I pay so I'm sorry, but I mean they're just they're just so far behind Tesla. It's it's not even funny in other news Porsche, uh, the the uh, the Mission E, the Taycan, Taycan, whatever you want to call it, that that car, they have Porsche has come out and they have basically said that, um, well, they're challenging Tesla owners. I guess they specifically called out Model Three Performance. Um, that the Porsche all electric car will be able to have sustained performance over and over and over. So I guess what they did is they took this car a, car out somewhere in like Stuttgart, I think that's how you pronounce it in Germany. Um, they took the car out and they were doing uh, launches, zero to 124 miles an hour. I think it was like zero to, zero to 200 kilometers an hour. So they did these launches over and over. Uh, I think they did like 30 of them or something just to show that the Porsche has sustained performance. Now I'll caveat that. The Model 3 performance has better performance than the uh, Porsche Taycan, AKA the, um, the zero to 60 times are lower. I don't know what the Model 3 zero to 124 mile an hour time is though. So that is, that is also peculiar. But most people in real world situations can't go zero to 124 hour, <laughs> zero to 124 miles an hour really anywhere, especially not on any legal roads in the US. Um, but I guess as a Porsche driver, like you want to know that you're buying a car that has those performance specs, you know, like Nurburgring lap times or sustained performance or whatever it may be. So I understand where Porsche is coming from, like, from with this, but it, it just doesn't really make sense. Now, in addition to that, even the Model S, like even if you can't sustain like 2.4, 2.3 second, like zero to 60 launches over and over, you're still getting faster than the Taycan, which is rated at like 3.5 seconds, zero to 60. That's terrible. I mean, let's be honest. Wait for it. Ah, it's just, it's just always so much fun. Um, you really just can't beat the, uh, the peppiness, the torque of an electric vehicle. It, it is fantastic, unless you're getting like crazy supercar level. Um, yeah, just I can't afford that yet. So like any other normal car, like in this price range, this is gonna blow it out of the water and my car is five years old. So I'll take it any day. Anyways, um, so back to what Porsche was saying. So I guess a Model 3 owner was like, hey, I'm gonna go do 31 launches to show that I can you know, do over 30 launches with consistent powers. So back to some things I was talking about earlier, my uh, three, or I guess my six options are keep my car and get a Model 3, keep my car and get a newer Model S, keep my car and get a used Lamborghini Gallardo manual. And the other options are to trade my car in and get any of those three. So basically the th three same cars, the Model 3, Model S, or Lamborghini Gallardo, and either trade in or keep my car. So those are kind of the six options. Now, I did consider another option, which is to get something like a Porsche Taycan or whatever, but it just doesn't make sense. They don't have the supercharging network. Uh, the performance isn't as good. I, I just I just don't really see the point of it. They're also not, like they haven't been around as long. There's really no other feasible electric cars on the market. Um, and then buying any other like performance car newish, um, 
the reason I like the Lamborghini Gallardo is that, well, North it's already North had, North North had um, the Lamborghini Gallardo has already had most of its depreciation hit it. Whereas if I were to get another car that was, let's say, newer in that same like 80 to 100K price point, well, I'd probably lose money on it. Thank you, Waze. Um, so it's, it's, it's tricky, but that's the problem with the Tesla, right? Like either of the Teslas, I'm gonna take a huge depreciation hit on it. So that's where it's like, I don't, it's, there's a lot to consider here. It's gonna be a couple months decision. I mean, it took me like six, seven months to decide and finally find this car and purchase it. So it took a while. I mean, obviously I was searching for a while, but I got to the point where I was like, okay, if I find one with X, Y, and Z specs, uh, you know, for, why price i'm just i'm pulling the trigger as soon as i find it so that's kind of how this one went down that's i i take i take i take a long time to make my decision so it's going to be a while to say the least basically what i'm saying is if you guys are enjoying this interior be sure to like and subscribe if you're not enjoying the interior be sure to like and subscribe because this car might be staying it might be going but you never know Anyways, um, yeah, so those are kind of the options that are on the table right now. I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but it's not gonna happen over the next like month or two, but but dedicated charger is coming. So I'm, 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 I wanna say that's confirmed. It's like 100%, but that's gonna be like mid-September. More to come, more to come. But basically like three, four weeks, dedicated charger for my car. So that'll be nice if I get another Tesla, I know I'll have a dedicated charger. I can always be fully charged in the morning. So. Yes, more to come on that. Uh, also, like and subscribe if you want to see this dedicated charger. Definitely getting those, uh, get that subscription button. You know, just like, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's coming, but the point is, let's get to, let's get to doing some more wrap because uh, that's, that's what I got for now. We're gonna have fun with this wrap, and we're gonna enjoy the Tesla. I mean, the Tesla is great either way. Even if I keep this car, I absolutely love it. The torque is still fantastic. It's quicker than almost every other car on the road, even though it's slower than most Teslas now, which is crazy. Um, but either way, I love this car. It is it is doing what it's doing, but I, I am slightly worried about it being out of warranty, but also not that worried just because so many of the parts that are kind of known to go bad have, have gone bad and they've been fixed with the newer improved parts. And at the same time, the drive unit and uh, battery under full warranty for like another two and a half, three years. Until then, more rap. the heck are they doing get out of here i mean i just I, I don't know what to do guys i don't like what do you guys think i should do leave what you guys think i should do in the comments below i just i really don't know it's just quite a conundrum i'm just model three model s or potential gallardo i don't, I don't know i don't know i don't know i mean it obviously depends a lot on like my financial position in like three to four months from now but um yeah She's looking good, and I haven't even washed her yet, so. Alright, oh, man, she's looking so good. The nice thing about vinyl is it cleans actually super easily. The water just beads right up on top of it. Wipe it dry. You're good to go. So you have paint protection, um, scratch protection, all that good stuff. The water comes off of it nice and easily, and you can do some crazy design like this. So that that's kind of why I'm doing this. Obviously, this design was not the most ideal as far as practicality and time it's going to take and difficulty level, but um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. These tinted taillights are looking so good, and uh, I mean, we might have to change them soon. You can see it's peeling up a little bit there, but um, for now, it's a nice five foot job. Like most of the things I do, just stand back, look at it and appreciate. Um, but uh, this is all going away soon enough. But anyways, let's get her dry and then let's get a couple more rows cranked out. We also got to fill in these gaps over here, but otherwise she's looking pretty good. And for a Tesla Talk Tuesday, I think this is, this is coming along nicely. It's
talk about a tight squeeze. We got real close right back there, but uh, she fits like a glove. And uh, now we got a lot of space right in here. Woo! That's why you need a backup cam. I love backup cams. Hey, look at that, guys. We got a charging space in the Mercedes that gets 10 miles of electric range. All right, guys. I, of course, I'm a little bitter whenever the Mercedes is plugged in because, well, if you look online, it's like 56 MPGE, but that counts 10 miles of electric range. 10 miles of all electric range if it's solely electric range. Now, after that, it only gets like 25 MPG, so it's still terrible gas mileage, and it fully charges in two and a half hours on like one of these chargers. Otherwise, it's like four to five hours on a regular 120 volt outlet. Point being, that car should never be plugged in overnight. Very rare occasions. If you get home at like 11 o'clock and no one's in the charging spot, fine. Pull in, charge overnight. I try to do my part. I try to do my part. They have every right to park there. But yes, I definitely get better. Definitely get better. 100%. 100% get better. Anyways, I'm gonna have my own dedicated charger soon, so who really cares? Being solid green light means fully charged. They've been plugged in for five hours and 41 minutes. I've learned. I've gotten better since I first got a fully electric car. And uh, everybody's got to do their part. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, so I have 105 miles, fully charged. It's gonna take 10 hours and 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and reset that limit down to like the normal amount. Give it a second, give it a second, give it a second. There we go, eight hours and 50 minutes. Okay, so it's still gonna take about nine hours to charge. So my point is it's gonna take me all night to charge. I'm not gonna move it. I mean, I'll move it in the morning when I wake up, but it takes much longer than two and a half hours to fully charge my car so you know like the e-tron guy i don't care if he's parked here it's not a big deal but aside from being bitter we've got another row done so we're moving ever so much closer to do, getting the full hood done we're almost there not quite there but it's looking pretty wild i think it's looking pretty good and that's i mean it's going to go all the way up to like here it's a little dark in here but i think it's going to look pretty sweet when it's finished Granted, I've only done the hood so far, so more to come. All right, guys, if you're enjoying the videos, please, please consider liking and subscribing. But until next time, thanks for watching.